Hi, I'm Ryan Samansky, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we have another video in our ship comparison series. This time we're talking about the Congo class battle cruisers, uh, the class of ships that perhaps more than any other led to the development of the Iowa class battleships. Before we get started on that, uh, you've probably heard by now that the museum is going to close uh, on Labor Day unless uh, we're going to close on Labor Day because we haven't seen enough visitation uh, across our busy season. So we're going to close down for the six months of our slow season and then try and open up next spring. Uh, in the meantime, nearly all of the staff at the museum, including myself, are going to be furloughed. Uh, that means that we're going to stop making these YouTube videos starting on Labor Day, September 7th. I want to keep making these videos. If you guys want to keep watching these videos, check the description down below for a link to our GoFundMe page where we're trying to raise $20,000 to cover the cost of online education classes and our YouTube channel over the next six months. Uh, anything you're able to donate helps, uh, and if you can't donate, please share the link and uh, help us find some more supporters out there. So the Congo-class battlecruisers were Japan's uh, first, really, uh, second-generation dreadnoughts. Uh, they had built a pair of dreadnoughts earlier, and they had a number of uh, semi-dreadnoughts laying around, and uh, none of these ships would survive long after World War I. Up until this point, nearly all Japanese warships had been built in Great Britain. Uh, and the Japanese continued their relationship with the British with the design for the Congo class battle cruisers. And the British took the design uh, for the moderately successful Lion class and updated it to include the Japanese 14 inch gun, 14 inch 45 caliber gun, uh, and to change the arrangement of the uh, turrets so that they were all super firing and uh, had better arcs of fire compared to the Lions and updated some other things. Um, and the design was so successful that they did a similar uh, design for the British's Tiger uh, class, which was one of their better battle cruisers of World War I. When Japan got Congo, they copied it and made three sister ships built in Japan. They'd finally built the capacity to build their own capital ships uh, and they had a ton of experience from operating ships for the last uh, 20 years or so at this point, and a lot of British technical expertise. Uh, and they would never buy another major warship in a British yard again. All subsequent Japanese battleships and battle cruisers would be built in Japan. So, uh, the Congo class actually went through a couple of different iterations. Uh, the first ships were completed in 1913. Um, the, the final members of the class were in service by 1915. In the interwar period, they had two major reconstructions. Uh, and by World War II, the Japanese were referring to them as battleships rather than battle cruisers. Um, and none of these ships would survive World War II. Uh, I'm going to talk primarily about their ultimate configuration. So these numbers are all for uh, their late war uh, World War II configuration, not necessarily as built. But they ended up displacing about 32,000 tons, uh, which was up at least 4,000 tons from their design. Uh, they ended up 720 and a half feet long uh, and 108 foot 7 inches wide. So these ships were slightly wider than Iowa class battleships with their blisters added. They had a speed of 30 knots, uh, a range of uh, 10,000 nautical miles. They had a crew of about 1,500 men so much smaller than an Iowa-class battleship, almost half of an Iowa-class battleship in wartime. They had eight 
14 inch guns, two twin turrets forward, uh, and two twin turrets aft with an aircraft catapult between them. Uh, they were originally designed with 16 6 inch guns, but uh, lost about half of them during modernizations and reconfigurations and whatnot. Uh, they originally had some 3 inch anti aircraft guns, but these were replaced with eight 5 inch anti aircraft guns. Uh, and eventually, by the end of the war, the surviving ships had 12. Uh, and by 1945, Haruna had 118 25 millimeter guns. Uh, the 25 millimeter was basically the equivalent of both the 20 millimeter and the 40 millimeter that the Allies used. Uh, it was inferior to both of those weapon systems, but it was what the Japanese had for mid-range and close-in anti-aircraft defense. Uh, for armor, these ships were Dreadnought-era battle cruisers. They had an 8-inch belt, um, relatively light armor around their turrets. Uh, in addition to their lower belt, they had an upper belt. They had uh, armor up to 3 inches forward and aft of their belt and armored bulkheads. Uh, had a decently thick 14-inch armored conning tower. Uh, and, and as built, they looked like British warships with the tripod-style mast. During uh, reconfigurations in the late 20s, they received a uh, prototype of the iconic Japanese pagoda-type superstructure. And uh, by their late 30s modernization, they received the uh, six-legged uh, iconic Japanese pagoda mast. Uh, these reconfigurations improved their torpedo defense, improved their deck armor, uh, and improved the elevation of their turrets, uh, improved their superstructure, fire control, command and control abilities, uh, and improved their uh, boilers. So they went from being coal fired to oil fired, and uh, even though they had all this weight and all this extra width added, uh, they also lengthened the ships. They were able to maintain over a 30 knot speed throughout their career. And like I said, initially these ships were battle cruisers, uh, and then arbitrarily the Japanese started referring to them as battleships uh, following their reconfigurations, uh, even though their armor was not that significant. In action, the Congo class were active more so than any other Japanese battleship, uh, basically from the beginning of the war to the end. Congo herself saw some action in the uh, Western Pacific early in the war. Uh, she would participate with the uh, center force during the Battle of Leyte Gulf, uh, and she would engage American destroyers and escort carriers there. And on her way home, she was torpedoed by an American submarine, uh, and the damage caused her to roll over and sink. This is a problem we'll see with the uh, Congo class. They are very top-heavy with their pagodas and all the extra weight they had added. Uh, and if you go in New Jersey's uh, engine rooms, you can see from one side of the ship to the other. They go the full internal width of the ship, excluding, of course, the torpedo defenses. On the Congo class, their engineering spaces were divided in half down the middle lengthwise of the ship, which meant that if their torpedo defenses were breached on any side, it would only flood half of the engineering spaces on one side. It's good, you're not losing all of your propulsion. The downside is that that side of the ship takes on a massive amount of flooding, which causes you to list. And they didn't have enough voids to counter flood that enough uh, to keep the ship stable. So these ships tended to take water, uh, take damage underwater, uh, and then progressively flood and roll over. Uh, despite their battle cruiser origins, all of these ships take a real beating before they're sunk. They don't suffer catastrophic explosions like British battle cruisers. Uh, it takes serious progressive damage uh, before they slowly sink. But they do slowly sink, and Japanese damage control techniques were not able to counteract the slow rollover of the ships as too much water accumulated on one side. Uh, 
Next up is Hiei. She was the second built of the Congo class and the first Japanese battleship completed in Japan. Uh, you know, she was around during World War I like all the ships in the class. They didn't really do much. Uh, in the interwar period, she was retained by the Washington Naval Treaty, but forced to be demilitarized into a training ship by the London Naval Treaty. So the Japanese had to remove some of her guns, armor, and engineering equipment, uh, but they put it into storage to save for later. And uh, so they used her as a training ship. The American battleship Utah and the uh, Japanese battleship, excuse me, the British battleship Iron Duke were kept in very similar configurations, but uh, neither one was reactivated. Hiei would be reactivated. Uh, she would miss a lot of the major first reconstructions that the other three get, but she would get the, the full second reconstruction just before World War II started. Uh, and she would be part of the escort for the Kido Butai, the, the Japanese carrier strike force that attacks Pearl Harbor, uh, Midway, uh, and so on. Uh, and then she would be sent to the Solomon Islands and uh, on shore bombardment duty with her sister ship Karishima, she would get involved in uh, the naval battle of Guadalcanal with a force of American cruisers and destroyers to come out of the darkness at point blank range. Uh, and she's able to badly damage a number of American ships and sink a number, and uh, she, uh, during the battle, two American admirals are killed. Uh, but she is absolutely riddled with 85 5, 6, and 8-inch shell holes. Uh, and again, these shots aren't big enough to do serious damage, uh, but they're able to disable individual systems, uh, jam her rudding, rudder, uh, and, and render the ship immaneuverable and basically unable to defend herself. Uh, so following the battle, Karishima tries to tow her out of the battle area, but as daylight comes, so do American aircraft. Uh, and over the course of the day, they attack her repeatedly, uh, and they put some torpedoes into her, and she starts to flood, uh, and just the cumulative damage that this ship succumbed to eventually uh, causes her to be lost north of Guadalcanal. Karishima is next. She receives both major upgrades. Uh, she is also operating with Hiei and the Kido Butai. Uh, she operates alongside Hiei straight on through the naval battle of Guadalcanal. Uh, survives the first one. Hiei takes the brunt of the damage and Karishima makes it out virtually unscathed. Uh, comes back another night to finish the job, so to speak, bombarding Henderson Field. Uh, and is caught unaware by a pair of American battleships. She and her escorting cruisers are able to uh, temporarily cripple South Dakota by riddling her superstructure. But Washington, Admiral Lee's flagship, manages to uh, hide behind the burning South Dakota, and uh, the Japanese never even know she's there. The Americans, of course, with their radar, know Karishima is there. And uh, Washington is able to get to close to point blank range and just unload her 16 inch and 5 inch guns into Karishima. Uh, and instantly, surgically, knocks out command and control, fire control, uh, primary and secondary batteries, uh, engineering, damage control, just completely obliterates this ship in a couple of salvos to the point that uh, she can't be saved. The American battleships are armed with 16-inch guns, so their armor can protect them from the 14-inch guns of Karishima. Karishima is armed with 14-inch guns. Uh, her armor cannot stop a 16-inch shell, and she is absolutely overmatched. Uh, and progressive flooding causes her to roll over and sink. Uh, and finally, that brings us to Haruna, the last of the ships, and uh, Haruna operated alongside Congo for much of the war, um, was in the Western Pacific during the early part of the war, didn't get sent to the Solomon Islands with uh, Kirishima and Hiei to die, and uh, was with Kurita Center Force during Leyte Gulf, 
manages to get her licks in against American uh, escort carriers and destroyers, uh, manages to survive the year 1944, unlike much of the rest of the Japanese fleet, and puts into port and will never sortie again. Uh, American carrier aircraft catch her in port and sink her, and uh, She's still sitting there in the mud post-war and, and ended up getting scrapped. The Japanese just didn't have the oil to deploy her anymore. So, uh, the Congo-class battle cruisers slash battleships, uh, because they were the oldest of the Japanese capital ships that were retained, um, were sort of expendable. They were the fastest of the Japanese battleships, so they escorted the carriers, and that made them hugely uh, valuable uh, while the Japanese had a carrier fleet. When their carrier aviation was destroyed, these ships became uh, expendable because of their old age and their, their lighter firepower. So they are thrown into the battles around Guadalcanal, where other Japanese uh, warships are not. Uh, and so they suffer for it. Uh, they're, they're pretty good World War I design. In World War I, there are not too many ships that could compete with them. Their 14-inch guns give them some of the greatest firepower. Um, their armor is as good as any other battle cruiser. Uh, and as we can see, their armor gives them pretty good survivability. They do not catastrophically explode. Uh, hits below the waterline will eventually cause them to succumb and a lot of their internal systems can be knocked out by other capital ships, which limits their ability to fight back. Comparing them to the Iowas, uh, these ships were the whole reason why the Iowas existed. The United States had no uh, fast battleships or battle cruisers. So for the entire 19-teens, 20s, 30s, uh, into the 40s, the United States feared what these ships could do. Uh, as scouting forces, as raiders, we had nothing that could compete with them. Um, and that's why when the escalator clause was invoked, the United States decided rather than having uh, the heavily armed and armored version of the Iowa class, they wanted the fast version because they needed a class of ship that could keep up with the Congos, and that's why four were initially authorized. An additional two would be authorized later, but four Iowas to compete with the four Congos. Um, the Iowas overmatched the Congos in absolutely every way. They are, after all, 20, 25 years more modern. Uh, they have heavier firepower and vastly thicker armor, uh, they have better compartmentalization and much better torpedo defenses. Uh, they have the open engine room arrangement, which means that water leaking in uh, just goes the whole length of the space rather than being caught halfway and causing the ships to roll over. Uh, in terms of anti-aircraft firepower, they are much greater anti-aircraft escorts. Uh, that's not a fault of the Congos so much as a fault of the Japanese anti-aircraft gun manufacturers in general. Uh, the Japanese 5-inch guns were inferior, the, and they never had as many of them on their ships. Their 25mm uh, was vastly inferior. Um, their fire control, because they lacked modern radar systems, was vastly inferior. Uh, so even though they could keep up with the carriers and escort them, they were not great uh, anti-aircraft escorts because they could barely protect themselves, much less other ships. Uh, which is why even though these ships are at midway escorting the carriers, uh, it doesn't do any good. Their secondary batteries in casemate guns, which makes them ineffective in most weather. Uh, and they should have been more effective around Guadalcanal, where you're fighting point-blank, uh, but they couldn't depress enough to fire at American ships at point-blank range. So uh, the American guns in turrets on the main deck, able to depress f negative five degrees, probably wouldn't have had the same issue. Uh, and 
The American battleships had more modern boilers, so they had higher range. Uh, they could escort the carriers further, and they had higher speed. They were just all around more modern ships. Um, so comparing these two is not fair. The Congos were good designs in their day, and the Japanese got their money's worth out of those ships, although they had to continually invest in them to update them over the years. The Americans do the same thing with the Iowas. Every time they bring them back, they have to update them. Um, at the end of the day, the um, Congos are the reason why the Iowa class exists. Um, and there was a chance for Iowa class battleships to meet Congo class battleships at Leyte Gulf, but Admiral Halsey took the Japanese bait and missed the opportunity. Had that occurred, the American battleships would have probably been able to overwhelm the Japanese with superior armor and firepower and choose the engagement with their superior speed. That said, the Congos are the beginning of indigenous Japanese shipbuilding uh, with the battleship chain, which will culminate in the Yamato class that is every bit the peer of the Iowa class uh, and equals or exceeds them in almost every category. Um, so, what do you think of this comparison? Leave a uh, comment in the comment section down below. How many Congos do you think it would have taken to defeat one Iowa? Do you have any questions about what we talked about or any further insight into this class of ship? Also leave that in the comment section. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for uh, more uh, content. We're trying to put it out every single day. Check the description down below for other related videos, such as the Naval Battles of Guadalcanal, which heavily feature Congo-class battleships. Uh, and also check for the link to our GoFundMe page. If you want to see us continue to make videos after uh, Labor Day, September 7th, uh, we need your donations to get up to $20,000 to continue this program. Thank you for your support so far. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I hope I will see you in later September.